fish and ocean. Understand it clearly. I'm giving an overview and the summary of these entire 40 steps. What about fish and an, and an ocean? You know, the birth, growth, entire life, eating, excreting, happens in an ocean. What happens if you take the fish out of the water? Fish will die. There is no existence of the fish. So how the master makes us aware, understand that point. At least the fish has a place, can be taken out of the ocean to know that you are existing because of an ocean. Clear? You exist. Fish exist because of a water. If you take fish out of the water, there is no existence of the fish. At least there is some place. There is some place where you can take the fish out of water to know to help the fish to know that you cannot exist without water. Now apply the same metaphor with our human life. Consciousness is all pervading. There is no place where there is no consciousness. Ocean of consciousness. And in that kind ocean of consciousness, we constantly live, work, eat, fight, react, respond. This is about our life. Now, how to help the human being to know that your existence is consciousness? At least for fish, it is easy. You can take the fish out of an ocean, water, and it is separate. And then it starts breathing fast. So you know. Are you understanding that point? Are you getting it? There is no place for the human being. He could be taken out of that ocean of consciousness so that, you know, I can know it. There is no way. But I have to find myself. I have to find the reality. I have to find the reality. So there is no way it means what? We are moving logically and rationally. No mysticism. So it means that consciousness, that existence, that reality is present in the thought but it is not the thought. It is present in the body, but not the body. It is present in the mind, but not the mind. It is present everywhere, outside, inside, but it is none of these objects. Clear first point? So the Eastern wisdom says, Shravanam, listening and learning from a teacher gives you the knowledge that helps you to realize and discover that reality. Where is your house, Lara? I get a right knowledge and I reach the house. How easy it is. Why it is easy? Many reasons. Many reasons. First, this mind has practiced for millions of years. It has a cultural social parental conditioning to know a thing when it is front of you. When it covers space and time. Oh, how far is your house? Oh, maybe 30 miles. What is the city? You see, everything is objective. Mind can put this information in front of itself. And that conditioning is so deep. We are so much habitual. <clears throat> so 
So when masters in the Eastern wisdom says, oh, you have a real self, bring in front of me. You, it cannot be done. Not possible. So who is asking? The mind that is habitually conditioned. <clears throat> that is why just by listening, we do not arrive at a knowledge of the real self. Are you getting it? Simple way. I'm trying to make it very simplified. So, now what happens? So, first part is the Shravana means listening and learning from a teacher. So, now that knowledge has a doubt and it has an opposing tendencies. Where is the self? Is the self what is the color of the self? What is the shape of the self? There is no shape. There is no color. Consciousness is colorless. You see, mind poses two things. Doubt. So the knowledge is has a doubt. And it has the opposite tendencies. Why it has the opposite tendencies? Because we have been trained, conditioned heavily not only in this life, but for millions of years, the entire human consciousness. So why we say that we have been conditioned habitually for millions of years? My parents conditioned me and my life. His parents conditioned his life. So the entire human consciousness is heavily conditioned. That is why we have to learn the journey of <coughs> Eastern wisdom. Clear? Now see the third point. Because we have a knowledge that is full of doubt and we have the cultural conditioning, it moves in opposite direction. So second step is mananam. Mananam means contemplation and reflection. <clears throat> Yesterday night I started Contemplation on the real self, I need not to practice meditation. I moved gently, naturally into the state of meditation. That is the power of mananam. But we have to be very clear. If we are not clear, that is why we have to learn as a team. We have to learn from it. So manan has two parts, contemplation and reflection. So after learning the principle, you ask questions, you ask questions. The more questions you ask, <clears throat> the greater the clarity is. But what is the, uh, are you asking the right question? <clears throat> what do you mean? It is a class of physics and you are asking the uh, questions pertaining to medicine and biology. So our questioning should be consistent. You see, that is how the master writes. Uh, are you understanding? Our question should be consistent with the particular subject to clear the doubt, to bring the clarity. So contemplation brings the clarity. And a reflection removes the doubt. Are you clear? So we need to ask the question within the framework of a physics if there is a physics class. But what happens to the mind? Mind goes back to something else and it starts asking it starts asking unnecessary and unwanted questions and then we say oh there is nothing in it and we leave the path we do not reach there so what happens because we have a heavy conditioning in the mind then what that heavy conditioning in the mind wants to find the goal first before reaching to the path. 
So the master waits patiently. Master guides you again the different principles to loosen that knot of those principles. Take one example. <clears throat> is A an apple? Answer is no. But we learn in our kindergarten class. Isn't it? A for apple, B for banana. That is how we learned in India. But A is neither for apple, B is neither for banana. We don't want to learn the basics. We want to question the final goal. So our reasoning, our questioning must be consistent with learning. That is why we have the 40 steps. So learn all the steps first. Have a basic knowledge and understanding and then continue the practice then the whole uh, whole thing becomes clear. Now I'm giving you a surprise. We have been learning I think 10th principle we are going to learn. First thing to understand, yoga is one, hat yoga is a part of it. Yoga is one, raj yoga is a second part. Tantra yoga is the third part. Mantra yoga is the fourth part. Karma yoga is the fifth part. Bhakti yoga is the seventh part. So what we do in our daily life, that's a wrong notion. I am doing a hat yoga class. No, you are not doing yoga according to the teaching. You know, I am you know, more on the Kundalini Yoga side as if the Kundalini has chosen you. You are not doing yoga. First, now understand these 40 steps. In the first verse, having the first four practices first four steps lays the foundation of karma yoga, raja yoga, bhakti yoga, mantra yoga and jnana yoga. It, you can say yoga of knowledge, yoga of body, yoga of mind, yoga of meditation, yoga of love. It lays a basic foundation. It teaches you the alphabets. Second four practices, this master says, just learn how to apply these principles in your daily, family, professional, social life. Next four steps. So it means we have to apply in our life yoga. Yoga that means all the yoga. So maybe when I am learning yoga of knowledge, yoga of karma yoga, raja yoga, maybe in the background. That is why we say it is a part of jnana yoga. The rest of the yoga is background. One yoga is made predominant at a particular activity in the life. Are you getting it? So the second and the, then comes the second verse. <coughs> the second verse has again the two components. We have four steps. How to nurture the entire life towards self-discovery. So that you don't fail. You continue the journey. What are those steps is explained. In the verse second... We learn another four steps how to commit the entire life for the journey of self-discovery. The real learning of the principles comes in the second verse. What is commitment? What is sincerity? What is devotion? How you replace the egoistic life? How you learn to meditate on the real self which has no shape in the size and the color? So that step you learn in the last four steps of the second verse. So we have 16 steps. 
Now coming to the third verse, learn how to bring clarity and conviction in the journey. If there is no clarity and conviction, then we cannot treat the path successfully. So we learn how to contemplate and reflect upon the meaning and the essence of the real self. How do I say that the real self is beyond space, time and object? Can the space limit the space? No. Who limits the space? Can you, can you guess? In deep sleep, space is not there. So who has limited? Time. Time limits the space. So it means that real self is beyond the sleep and beyond the space. You know, you understand. Through contemplation and reflection, now you are bringing the clarity. So it is also beyond the object. What do you mean by beyond the object? How the object limits? I say, I am not David. What it means? I limits myself to myself. And so I say, here is a David. David limits himself. So you see, these objects, every object has a limitation. I am not David, David is not me. I am not Lara, Lara is not me. But that real self is beyond time, space and object. So in the third verse, we learn the four steps, how to avoid, how to enter into a clear contemplation and a reflection on the real self. Isn't it? Does that make a sense? Now the another part is, how to prevent the mind to go into the second secondary subjects. If I am teaching physics, I should not go to biology. I should restrict myself. So here the master says how to avoid contradictory and irrational arguments coming from the cultural social conditioning belief. Does that make a sense? How to avoid? How to prevent the mind to enter into contradictory, irrational argument? Why? Why? We understand that the intellect cannot reach to the real self. It is beyond. So our argument, our logic, our reasoning should be consistent with the principles of Eastern wisdom. That makes sense. That is what happens in any branch of science. Are you clear? Then the next four steps comes the real third verse. Comes what we say practice of meditation. Practice of meditation. So Patanjali gives almost 29 different stages of meditation. Don't get concerned. You know. I mix up many practices together. So the third verse gives you the first four steps. What exactly? How to enter into a meditation? Fourth verse. We remove the obstacles in meditation. How to remove those obstacles in meditation? And in the fourth verse. Ah, and the entire fourth verse is focused on what are those obstacles that normally enters into a seeker's life. We remove all those obstacles. And the fifth verse is all about deepening the practice of meditation. So in the fifth verse, when we reach their first two steps, it says you are in the state of meditation. You enjoy that state. Huh? Some of you have started enjoying that. Again, you deepen the practice where you reach to an objectless state of meditation. The last four steps, uh, last four steps in the verse five helps you how to drop, dissolve, 
the past karma. You see karma yoga, we talk of law of karma. Everything comes into these four steps, 40 steps. And now you understand how to dissolve and drop the future karma from any kind of attachment. You exhaust all the karma. You go beyond the law of karma. Then what is the result? Result is awakening, realization of your true nature in this very life. So these 40 steps covers all the different ranges in the schools of yoga. Are you getting it? So that is how it is very impossible to put all these 40 steps in five verses. The book consists of hardly two A4 size pages and that covers the entire journey of 3000 texts. So it needs a, an explanation. It needs a clarity about every step. So we use this, say for example, we use the mantra yoga to purify the mind. We prevent the mind to go into any kind of mysticism. Mantra has power, no doubt. A specific way of practicing of the mantra gives the power to your mind. It takes time. But our goal is not there. So we use a particular aspect of the mantra yoga. We use the yoga of love. Huh? As I was explaining, three kinds of love and we get more and more frustrated. I love you so much, but now you have stopped loving me. So we, the master says, can I love that real self? Can I develop the love for the real self? The moment I develop love for the real self, I love everyone equally. Depending on the transactional world where we are. Don't take your mind to other irrational arguments. Our mind springs those thoughts, you know. You know. Other irrational, you know. So yoga of love is used to redirect our emotion to search the real self. The same thing happens in the karma yoga. In while performing any action, if the ego is working in inside me. And if I'm seeking the fruits of an action that we have seen in the first eight steps, that will continue to accumulate karma, past impression. So I'm accumulating future miseries in my life. That is the journey of this Eastern wisdom we are doing in 40 steps. And this is just an overview. So we have, uh, if there is a need at the level of personalizing the practice, you can say Hatha Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, Raja Yoga, Mantra Yoga, Jnana Yoga, even Tantra Yoga, Kundalini Yoga. We see they are parts of the one whole yoga. What we understand, I have attended Hatha Yoga class. And what is the essence of Hatha, Hatha Yoga? And then we will start our practice. I just give you a, uh, uh, I'm tweaking. Hatha, normally we understand it is compulsion and force. It is not compulsion and force. Hakara Kirtitaha. 
Hatha is made up of two words. Hatha. Hakarah kirtitah suryeshtha karas chandra uchyate. So ha means the positive flow of energy. Sun flow. Tha means the left flow, the moon flow. When you bring these two energies equally in the harmony, you enter into the middle path, that middle path, and moving the mind into the middle path leads you to a meditative state. That is known as Hatha Yoga. What do we understand by Hatha Yoga? So you see, I have told you, we have to remove the wrong notion. When I am studying Eastern wisdom, I should stick to the principles of the Eastern wisdom. Second part, logic and reasoning, we should be consistent. At the same time, we should be aware that this real self is beyond the intellect and the reason. And I am getting an understanding in the knowledge how to transcend the intellect and the reasoning. Then we live into that real self which is beyond space, time and object. Don't be so serious. I'm just giving an overview and then we'll continue our journey. Yes, yeah, so let us start our meditation. Close your eyes. I thought it is very important in the beginning to give you that overview. I did not give it in the beginning. You know, for the kids, you sometimes you want to get the things done from the kids. Then you say, here is a candy. I'll give you one package of candy. candy. And then you ask him to do the things. That is what I have done. I'm sorry. Eyes are closed. The stay is one. Eyes are closed. Mind is looking inside in the space. Body is steady. And become aware of even the 1% of the calmness. So what the seeker does in the higher, uh, we say higher journey of meditation. Just check it. What I said, mind is facing within, body is steady, mind is aware of 1% of the calmness without any practice. So what is the higher step? Now your mind is looking at the continuity of that calmness. You see, I'm tweaking, slowly taking you to the higher step. So what is my job in the work and the meditation? To see that this continuity is not broken. Who breaks that continuity? The doubt in the knowledge and the opposing tendencies. So we need a purification. You see that? But still we say, let us settle into it. Let us see if that is possible by being comfortable. So you look at the neck joint. You feel the presence sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. Be 100% clear why we are doing the stage one with four steps. Shoulder joints, sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. So the seeker wants the continuity of that calmness with reference to the comfort in the body. You are still seeking the same thing. The mind does not become clear in the beginning, my friends. It is a journey. It is not a destination. The mind moves on the entire body from the top of the head to the toes. Looking at all the joints of the body and sensation being comfortable and steadiness. Third step is being carefree. 
So that brings a kind of realization in the mind that these thoughts, past impression, belief, wrong notions enters into the mind. So we say, let us separate it, being carefree. Notions surface, water is constantly moving, agitated, deep inside. The same water is calm. Water is one, the mind is one. So I give that metaphor in being carefree. I believe you remember you are standing across the road watching the traffic. They both are different. Birds in the sky and the space above. The bo- we want to show the mind that the thoughts are, experiences are different from you. Why? Go to the first step. We want continuity of the calmness. When there is a continuity of the calmness, now we have become a seeker before we explore anything deeper. Until then, if the master says no more, don't move your mind to anything else. Being casual is the fourth step. Casual? Do you remember the metaphor I gave? Existence, nothing happens to the existence. That sun reflects in the calm water, on the muddy water, on a rock equally. The water reflects the sun clearly. Muddy water, distorted image, rock, no image. Does anything happen to the sun? No. That is the nature of our existence. That is why uh, we say just be casual with inner awareness, my friends. So now we have understood that there are, I have to bring the mind to a state of doubt-freeness and Opposing tendencies should not enter into the mind at this moment until I reach to the destination. After that, who cares? So the second stage, that is why we need to have a purification. So looking inside the belly button, being cheerful, Start breathing quick, short and the gentle breath from the belly, short and quick, through the nostrils. Continue, short, quick, gentle breath, body remains steady, you remain comfortable and you have an experience of cheerfulness of the mind. And stop there, start breathing deep, silent, slow, 
first into the belly, then into the rib case, up to the throat. It should take time. Every time you have to inhale, deep, silent, and slow. And every time you exhale with a humming sound, louder, deeper, and longer. Continue as deep as possible, as louder, deeper, longer as possible. And stop it, but continue deep, silent, slow breathing. When you inhale, move the mind from the crown of the head to the tailbone in the spine. Exhale, the mind rises from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Now we have to remove the projections of the mind. That creates an opposing tendencies. A very simple step we are introducing. As you inhale, moving the mind down from the crown of the head to the tailbone, looking into the space inside, drop Om Shanti five times during inhalation. And during exhalation, five times. 
when the mind rises from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Om Shang mentally. It's a mental Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. When you share your experiences of this step, I'll tell you what exactly is removing the projections. Continue. Five times with the deep, silent, slow breathing. Again, this is the step coming from the Tantra. You see, I merge all these steps for accelerating our process of evolution consciously continue. Om Shanti Om Shanti Om Shanti Om Shanti Om Shanti Om Shanti, Om Shanti. And leave Om Shanti. Slip into the nyasa practice of the stage three as the mind moves with the breath inside the right arm in the space. From the shoulder to the fingertips or from the fingertips to the shoulder. So when I use the word, you slip from the stage 2 to the stage 3. This stage 3 of Nyasa practice deepens. So you remember the breath, deep silence, slow breath, is your car, mind is the driver, and the highway is the space inside. Move the mind inside the left arm. The previous step of the stage two and the stage. The transition happens so smoothly the mind almost merges with the breath. <clears throat> it leads to a variety of experiences of total infinite space. Let us see we will continue our journey. And moving the mind inside the right leg with the breath in the space.
Now in the left leg. Nyasa. <coughs> You'll be surprised to know a very literal meaning of the Nyasa, the purification from all sights. Sannyasa. You have heard the word Sannyasa being a monk. So if there is no purification from all sights, you wear all these kind of different clothes. It doesn't work. It's an inner journey. Now, moving the mind inside the spine from the crown of the head to the tailbone and from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Now leave this practice, start dropping Om Shanti, Om Shanti. Whenever there is any thought, feeling, sensation, experiences, memories from the past. <coughs> and you understand. I always give that example. You come to my house and you ask me, and I ask you, who are you? You say, Om Shanti. Well, why you have come, Om Shanti? Which car you on, Om Shanti? Etc., etc. You see that? So casually, with awareness, in the state of the cheerfulness, the moment any activity happens in the mind, and you simply drop, Om Shanti. And if you continuously answering Om Shanti of all the questions, what I will do? I'll say now. Maybe mind stays hell with you. I don't want to talk. So mind goes into. Mind is kept in abeyance. You have thousands of tools like this. And I'll leave this step, we move to the stage five, dropping OM naturally, without the help of the breath in the body. We bypass the body and the breath. Ascending and descending. What is descending? Casually you take your mind to the crown of the head, inside, be aware of the space and drop OM. Then walk down inside the forehead first become aware of the space do not start thinking om 
take your own time then inside the heart om inside the belly button om this is descending and now ascending from the belly button om heart don't do it as a habitual walk clearly become aware of the space check you are cheerful did you understand we want the continuity that is what we are looking here inside the head and the crown of the head beautiful i appreciate you guys and i'll leave the step return to the last step which is common step looking at the breath going in and out feeling the sensation of the breath and no change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath with that reference of the three pointed awareness inside we are in a state of doing nothing at the same time learning from our experiences and doing nothing in fact with three pointed awareness of the breath that too is the state of doing nothing but for the sake of understanding i'm saying now you do nothing Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti.
Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Bring your awareness on the right hand Bring your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside. The palms in the, you see again the space inside the palms. Know your experiences. Then bring the hands down to share your experiences. Wonderful. How are you, Stephen? Uh, I'm I'm good. Um, uh, a lot of stuff going on in in this meditation. Um, it, as soon as the meditation started, uh, the the experience for me was um, I actually felt. I heard the sounds of the ocean, but Good. I'm not sure whether that was because of your mind is deeper. Yeah. So, yeah. and then it, and then, at right before the point that we started the uh, the breathing uh, part, I actually saw myself standing in the ocean. And that too is good. As, as we started breathing. It was complete silence for me, um, which was bizarre. It was as if the page turned and everything went blank, and the breathing went extremely well and quiet. When we got to, um, when we dropped the ohm part, I, I was just in my body. I was just part of the breathing from head to toe, uh, head to the tailbone. And then when we went through the Niasta part, I I always feel energy hmm. through the through my body, um, but I always have this blockage when it comes to my legs. So I feel it in my arms, but I don't feel it in my legs. And when I, I didn't feel it in my right leg, and then I realized that it wasn't that I was an outside energy that I was feeling. But it's me, and as soon as I realized that I was the energy, I felt my left leg start pulsating as we went through the left leg, and I. That's good. At that, at that point, it the rest of the meditation was more about me trying to shut my mind off of trying to analyze what's actually going on, and then I slipped into a deeper meditation. So. Beautiful, uh, so, beautiful. So, so, th so thank you. I, it thank was, you. Uh, beautiful. It was you are now becoming a seeker. You see that? That is what I see, removing the projection. So we did one step and your mind reached to that point and it started feeling the same energy in the left one. So it happened, did you notice we introduced one more step? So we will continue. Wonderful. You are becoming a seeker. How are you, my friend, Terry? I have also something related to something that he said um, about trying to get my mind to stop uh, analyzing what was going on. But um, I felt like uh, in the very beginning, I saw something, but then I let it go. Yeah. I saw a triangle and then it went like this. So it went it went like a, well, I made like a tunnel. And at the end of the tunnel it was kind of like a light, like a diamond or something. But then I just I just let that go. And then after that I felt like something was fighting me that I was going in sock tied but something was pushing back. Yeah. And um I I think that I think that I have to let go of this idea like when you look at when you put your mind inside your arm yeah it's not the eyes 
Yes. I think it's that you're looking there, but you're not looking with your eyes, and I can't get. I can see back in here with my eyes, but I can't go. Yes, yes, that's a great understanding. And it's really sometimes it's hard to do. Yes, we learn from your experience, our experiences. This is beautiful. You see that I have talked. Uh, I did not include into today's talk. Sense organs are one-sided windows. They always open to the world outside. They do not open to the world inside. But because the, due to cultural, social, heavy conditioning in the mind, when I say look inside, the eyes are, physical eyes are ready to see inside. You cannot see it. So that takes time. That takes understanding and then you become free from it. This is one way how the mind projects. We have to remove, bring an end to this projection once and for all. Wonderful practice. I am very happy for you, Terry. And now let us go to Jerry and David. <clears throat> simple deep meditation right after the, the deep breathing um, I just really got really into this just beautiful blank space good for pretty much higher meditation the only thing I could see was layers of light there so everywhere um, and it was actually really hard for me to come out when you were doing the um, Om Shanti to raise my right hand my hands oh. for my uh, face felt so heavy, I could barely lift them. You see, so another you. way to becoming a seeker. I have been telling you, do you remember? You enter into meditation, it becomes difficult for you to come out of it. It does not mean that you stop working in the professional family life. You work, now your mind is in a different dimension of consciousness. I understand that. It's not that you stop, you know, recognizing... Oh, Jerry, who are you after coming out of meditation? No, it will not. Everything will remain outside normal. Huh? Do you understand? Don't misunderstand that part. When we say that you succeed in meditation, you are becoming a seeker, when it is difficult for you to come out of the meditation. How are you, Jerry? Good. Um nice layers of um of depth during the practice um, that's good and the om shanti or yeah the om shanti's through the different areas um is a is um just takes us a different another level like another, another level with that and with the niyasa um i used to feel like i was in Beside the arm, but now the arm is different. The space is different. That's so, so beautiful. In the niyasa now, there's really not a. Doesn't feel like. Um, it just feels more expansive. Like it's not just the arm. Yes. Right. So the space is 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 very um, vast now. Very vast now, and it is breaking that projection that I am the body. You're going out. Mm -hmm beyond the body. That's another way to become a seeker. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, beautiful. Uh, yeah, that's what I felt also in the middle and I said, I, I expressed that. How are you, my friend, Lara? You stop smiling? I'm okay. I'm okay. I got pulled out a bunch of times, like in this first level, our first attention distractions um there was a knock at the door there was a break in next door there's just like a bunch of nonsense towards the end i was able to every time i came back i was able to drop in yeah yeah um, and it was hard to get out at the end but there was there was but i had there were things i had to deal with so. yeah yeah it is going to happen it is going to happen it yeah. is going to happen i remember some one beautiful conversation with my master i'll remind you how are you, Samir? Sir, I enjoyed it a lot. Means in the end, it was like that that my body is being filled with OM. All the parts, my oh, fingers, my throat, 
and om is everywhere in my body when you were telling no say om 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 yeah then in my head in my ears everywhere there was om yeah since yeah. it was like that god is not there it is om is there yeah that is so what i really enjoyed. that I, is i'm really happy after very happy about wonderful <laughs> that is how the jerry explained an expansion so whether you say expansion or that om drops everywhere naturally by its on its own in 83 84 i used to do all these hat yoga postures lara almost 108 postures i used to do i used to uh, stand on my you know body turned upside down and used to walk with both my hands and especially it used to happen in my master's monastery and he used to love he used to say very good very good very good so after three months he asked me uh, how long you have been doing it i said for the last two three years so then he posed a question did anything happen to you i said what do you mean by it oh did you find the calmness and the peace and i said nothing happened after three months i said why you are telling me after three months and then he told me i also did it for 5 years nothing happened to me then i left it so it does not mean lara that we should leave we should leave we should not leave we are a teacher so we should be teaching all those postures for others but for us then master i said you should have told me 3 months before no you have to learn from your own experiences you have to question whatever you are doing whatever you are experiencing but it should be consistent with the principles of the eastern west don't go into the science if you go into the science then it will say yes it is very good then what they will say uh yes you see that when you go upside down then the blood flows towards your head is the nature has not provided us the way the blood goes up on its own relax calm down calm down calm down you see that so we should not enter into the physics while explaining the eastern wisdom we should not enter into the medical science whatever their research studies we complement it we understand it do you understand that point that's a very important point and then what happened couple of people in new jersey and also in india they have been doing upside down postures and because they have been doing in anxiety and the stress you see what happened some of the